let's say once we have clustered, so if we look back at what we have done before, uh, what we have, we have our adjacency matrix, and when we did the self-diffusion, we wanted to cluster uh, different patches of images together, right? And if we put them in the right order, you can see that we can easily see there are two clusters that appear here. So to cluster graph nodes appropriately, appropriately, the first thing we need to think about is how to define the similarity or a good similarity between samples or between nodes. So this is the first thing, okay? So one intuitive or direct way is to use just the weight between graph nodes. So if you have two nodes like, you know, these are your nodes, so you can just use this weight between them to do the clustering. Or, alternatively, you can uh, define an appropriate similarity matrix, metric or uh, matrix. So you define your own similarity between your, your, the nodes in the graph. And this is what we have done before. We started from the W, the uh, direct edge weight matrix for graph self-diffusion. And then we learned how to improve the similarity matrix W, okay, through the self-diffusion. And once we do that, we can actually apply this to the graph to find the clusters of nodes within this graph. So self-diffusion can be also uh, can be used for uh, for clustering different nodes, and these actually you can think about them as modules. So this is you know module two, and this is for example module one. Okay. So now the values of the similarity matrix W are used to group nodes into clusters such that the similarity within clusters is high and the similarity between clusters is very low, okay? So if you guys look at this example, we how many modules we have here? We have two modules, right? So these are the two modules that we have, the yellow one and the green one. And when I created this W matrix, I per on bas basically on purpose I alternated these um, you know nodes and you can see that the structure here is not very clear of the cluster but if I order them if I put them in the right order so basically once you learn the W you can easily apply any clustering alg algorithm to the similarity matrix and automatically find these um, these uh, modules or these clusters by arranging things uh, in the right order. So there are different clustering algorithms, but ultimately what you will see that this is actually, you know, this represents kind of a first module. And then the bottom uh, right part here, this represents a second module, okay? So here, this is all good. So clustering can give you some good results of modularity. However, we know this that uh, for this example, if we see this graph, we have two modules, right? We have the blue one and the orange one, and they are connected by these two um, edges. Agglomerative methods, for example, if we want to uh, use um, uh, hierarchical clustering, we will see that the core nodes of modules with strong pairwise similarity, they are maintained, so this is good. However, uh, these methods, they fail to group together peripheral community members with only weak similarity to the rest of a group. So, for example, here, we have, we can see that there is a core. Where is the core? Within a module, we learned about cores, right? So, this is a core where there is a very strong connection between these nodes, right? And then there is another core here. And what you guys know is that if we use agglomerative method, like ultimately what we'll have, we'll have only two modules and the algorithm will not be able to spot out the peripheral nodes to the cores, right? So these actually unitary modules that we would like also to spot out, okay? So this is one disadvantage of using um, hierarchical method. So any ideas? about how to use a new clustering approach that detects peripheral submodules. Yes, between the centrality, that's good. How? So 
So if we remove edges with highest between the centrality, we start with the ones with, you know, like the highest between the centrality, which is in this case, it's these two uh, bridges, basically, uh, between modules. And then do it like in, a, in, a, in an iterative manner. So we'll see that if we remove this, and then take the ones with the highest centrality, so maybe it will be this one. Okay, so basically if we break down, we try to find the edges that, you know, like uh, that are, that lie between all other nodes to communicate information, we'll see that we will start removing for sure the edges that lie within the core. So we will break down the core and then ultimately by doing this, we'll see that we can spot out the peripheral nodes very easily. Okay, so this is a very good idea and this is the algorithm of uh, Girvan and Newman that was uh, designed or proposed in 2012. So the basic idea is to remove edges with high between the centrality to identify the natural modules of a graph. So why this works? So if you guys remember what is between the centrality, this is from a graph theory lecture two. So we looked at this before. So it measures the proportion of shortest path between all node pairs in G that pass through node VI, or we can also generalize it to edges. So the nodes that are lying on a large fraction of these shortest path represent putative bottlenecks of traffic flow under the assumption that information travels along the shortest path. So remember, this is that this assumption we have questioned it before. We said information might not always travel along the shortest path, but given that assumption, we can say that these are actually, uh, you know, like if we remove these edges, these are bottleneck edges. So all information should go through, uh, you know, like um, these edges. The largest proportion of information should travel uh, through these edges. So this is one way of fragmenting and trying to find two modules because ultimately we know that any message traveling from one module to another module will must pass through these uh, set of intermodular edges. Okay, so this is the reason. So if we start to remove these edges, we fragment them. Uh, we disconnect the modules, and by disconnecting the modules, we can find them. Okay, we can detect them. So this is the key idea here. So let's look at how the algorithm works. So this is uh, actually a divisive method for decomposing a network into hierarchical modules as an alternative to agglomerative clustering. So they define modules based on the ordered removal of edges according to their betweenness centrality. So in the first step, so I'll read the steps and then we can apply it. Uh, so we calculate the between the centrality of each edge. Then in the second step, we remove the edge with highest between the centrality. Now, if you have multiple edges having exactly the same centrality, you randomly select one and remove it, okay? Then recalculate the between the centrality of the remaining edges. Now you have changed your graph, you removed some edges, so you need to recalculate again. And repeat step three and four until no edges remain. So as the algorithm basically progresses, you will see that you're fragmenting the, the graph, but also you're, you're detecting different modularities at different multiple scales, okay? So this is uh, how it works. And now if we look at this, uh, so the first thing we will fragment these two, so we'll detect two modules. So these are the two first modules, and then the other hierarchical sub-modules that are nested within each module. So here, if we take the orange sub-module, we remove these, so we detected maybe this sub-module, and then if we keep removing, right, this one, you will see another sub-module, and then if we remove these guys, so maybe this one, right, and then here, what you notice, we have detected the final, and we do the same thing for the blue uh, module, okay? So, yeah, so this is, you know, a very simple algorithm, now, before we have a break, so the last part uh, will be on, uh, we will study this paper, and they define a nice, a very nice algorithm to detect um, modules within a graph and uh, study uh, graph patterns and structures. 
So uh, we will learn about how to classify nodes in a cartographic manner based on their modularity. Okay, so any questions?